Hi everyone, my name's Ben and I'm a developer advocate here at Stripe and today I'm excited to introduce you to Edu. Edu is a integrations engineer, part of the professional services team and we're going to be talking about how he helps customers build Stripe integrations. So Edu, tell me first of all, what is an integrations engineer and how do they work specifically at Stripe? Yeah, so an integration engineer at Stripe is a member of the professional services team. Um, we work with some of our large enterprise and strategic users, helping them uh, integrate with Stripe. So we help turn the vision of what their ideal solution uh, with Stripe is into actual reality, making use of our APIs and our products and integrate it into their own infrastructure. So where does the role of a, say, an SA end and the role of a integration or professional service team member begin? That's a really good question. Um, we like to think of it as if a customer is now in point A and the SA thinks of the art of the possible with Stripe and designs this solution, which is point B, professional services and integration engineers help customers go from A to B. Okay, so do you work very closely with customers then, like literally in their offices with them, or how, how does that sort of interaction work typically? Yeah, quite a lot. Um, we do a bit of, of a hybrid model, so we spend some time um, with our customers, working with them in their offices. We might be doing workshops and teaching them about Stripe. We might be literally doing pair programming sessions and sitting next to their developers, helping them use the, the Stripe API and debug any, any errors they bump into and help them with that process. We also do those things virtually because we have customers all over the place, so a bit of both. So can you share any particular customer success stories, perhaps a project that you were involved with where you helped customers solve a particular problem? Um, I've personally spent a lot of my last three years at Stripe working with automotive companies in OEMs integrate with Stripe. Um, so I actually got to see a bit of different use cases with customers going live with Stripe, not only for things like car reservations online and say, I want to buy a car and you, you pay a reservation for that car and then go pick it up on on a dealership or something like that, which with Stripe is a pretty straightforward use case, but more complicated use cases. For instance, when you do EV charging with a car, how do you go up to a EV charging station, plug in the, plug the car into the, the charging point operator, and it just knows what is your card on file? How much did it charge for that, um, for that session? charges your car without any friction to the customer. You know, my charger automatically might invoice you at the end of the month. Um, those are pretty cool use cases that we get to work with on a daily basis. So do you have to specialize in particular industry or a particular set of products on Stripe or is it a very broad knowledge across everything? We do as a team have really broad knowledge across everything. It's quite natural for us individual to then have certain areas of expertise, whether it be industry specific, such as automotive mm -hmm. or product specific, such as individuals that are really skilled on RFA or issuing or deep core payments. Mm -hmm. So if you're working really closely partnering almost with customers, yeah you must be constantly hearing different challenges that they're experiencing, right? Both building with Stripe and, and in general. How do you collate that information to give that back to the product team and help, you know, in continually improve the product suite at Stripe? Yeah, professional services is a part of the product organization at right. Stripe. Uh, so we do work really closely with the product team and identify not only for these customers, what are some you know, gaps or areas to improve on our product that are critical for them to go live with Stripe and help both them go live um, and the product teams understand what is the gap and, and how to come up with a feature for our project that works for that specific um, use case, but also just because of this exposure to different customers help 
collate quarterly, bi-yearly, yearly feedback that goes back to the product team um, and just keeps driving the product forward with our users' requirements in mind. So how then do you help the product team to decide between what should be a new feature or a new uh, gate versus what is just a, you know, an extension for the customer, a new integration for the customer? How do you decide that kind of line? Good question. <laughs> um, I think that is this sort of thing where our team's experience and judgment comes in a lot because each case is a different case and it's quite hard to tell sometimes if, you know, is this an integration issue and we offer modular flexible APIs that customers can play with and uh, use them to do their, their own thing or is this a feature gap? A lot of the times where the line is, is, is this something that is possible to achieve with our um, API today? Mm. And if so, we're going to help users build that using our APIs. Or there's actually a gap in our product, in our APIs, that means for user A to achieve this, we don't have today a way of doing that. And that's where we'll, we'll typically collaborate with product to say, hey, let's think about a way of adding this to our product. So you mentioned there that you need to really draw on your experience with the product and, and you know, with trends and technology in general. How do you then stay up to date with everything that's happening, both with Stripe products and with technology trends in general? How do you stay on track and, and know what's coming and keep a broad knowledge of everything? Yeah. Um, a lot of blog posts, a lot of newsletters. Uh, there's great resources out there, not only on Stripe related topics, but more on, on technology as a whole, right? Because we work with users on a variety of, of tech stacks and frameworks and languages and technologies and architecture patterns and keeping up with everything mm -hmm. is challenging. Curating your set of newsletters and blog posts and websites that you read on a weekly basis is really important and I always make sure to have time on my week to stay up to date with those things and then you know when I work with a user on a project and get to learn about the stack they use and the technologies they use I might not know everything at the start I'll probably not know everything at the start and use the opportunity of those projects to learn more about those things as well. So with the customers that you're working with at the moment, are there any particular trends or, or stacks that you're seeing that are uh, coming up often? A lot of microservices, a lot of event-driven architectures on the background, um, a lot of React on the front end. Um, and you do see a lot of the new companies coming in with the Node.js's and Next.js's and Express's of the world and a lot of the enterprises that we work with a lot of our time still, um, you know, making use of the greatest and latest Java and object-oriented right. languages in, in the back. So if I had to pick two, I'd say a lot of new companies, digital natives going to the stacks around nodes and a lot of the enterprises making heavy use of Java, but both using React and micro front ends. It's almost like a split brain, isn't it? To be able to keep in here and track yeah. both of them. Yeah. So what advice would you give to yourself or to someone who's just starting out in tech, maybe they're at university or they've just left or they're self-taught? What advice would you give to them if they want to get into technology and perhaps become a professional services or integrations engineer? Be curious. Um, technology changes so quickly and now we're in a frenzy of, uh, of AI and LLMs and, and machine learning. Um, so being up to date or at least be curious to try and be up to date is incredibly important. And, you know, if, if you have the curiosity to work with different users, to see a lot of different use cases in the industries and, and discover more of, of that, then a role in professional services, a role in solutions architecture is really interesting. And then, you know, I think there's no 
there's no linear path for careers in tech, right? And in my previous role, I was a solution architect and I'm in professional services and I'm an integration engineer and I might go to be, you know, an engineer next or a product manager next, who knows, but just be curious, be okay to explore. The path is not linear at the end of the day. So just that open mind helps. It goes a long way. Your path a lot more linear than mine. In my previous role, I was a ski instructor. So the, the jump from one to another is vast, right? It, it's my not always obvious. My first job was, was a dog walker. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can you give any kind of final great resources for developers to learn more about how to build integrations with Stripe? As developers probably now looking at this video, the Stripe docs are pretty cool. Uh, they do have a lot of good stuff in them, quick starts, demos. Um, the, the YouTube channels are great. I really like the sample demos we have as well. So one of my favorite things is to, you know, on the docs, when you have like a quick start for something, it usually refers to a GitHub repository, which has a full demo built. Mm. I really like going there, exploring the code and seeing how things are built with Stripe to understand the best practices of the integrations so as well. What's the URL or the, the GitHub repo for that? Um, should be GitHub forward slash Stripe. Okay. We'll put it in the description of the video. Sounds good. So thank you so much for joining us, sharing your experience, being great to chat and uh, we'll see you next time.